Hello and what is up everybody welcome back to another video and this is going to be a start of a series called how to beat liquid at TI7. Um, a lot of these replay analysis videos aren't going to be really relevant if the next patch comes out but I just want to get good practice in doing this and what better practice can you get than theorizing strategies and learning about the best team to play Dota 2 right now Team Liquid are TI7 winners. So what this series is going to be pretty much is me going over every single replay that Liquid played at TI. It's a lot and you're going to have a replay analysis uh, for every single one. This is the first game they played in the group stage. It is against IG Vitality, a team that didn't even make it through the lower bracket. And I'm going to mute uh, Steam chat right now so I don't get bothered right now. And it'll be probably annoying for you guys as well. So, forgot to do that before the video started, but whatever. Let's get right into it. So, it looks like Liquid this game is going for the tri lane mid strategy. You could already tell that by their safe lane pick here, which will be the Necrolite. He can lane against a Darkseer just fine. Won't really care about the Iron Shell harass. And if he does happen to take harass for whatever reason, whether it's an Earth Spirit rotating the lane, he can sustain and he also went for a high sustain build here and rushing a magic wand to be survivable. This hero is almost impossible to kill with the magic wand and I do like this build coming out from him to make sure you can survive this lane. And again, this video is going to be more high level analysis so um, don't expect some lower level analysis. I'm expecting you guys to know like how every hero works and can be played at the highest level. Uh, for you to watch this, it's a lot different from my normal videos and I still think it's interesting to watch even if you're low MMR but just keep that in mind and this might be a side series from my actual normal videos for informative content tutorials and things like that but right now I'm not gonna talk too much more about that and just get into the analysis here so again we have a tri lane mid I'm actually gonna rewind a little bit as I missed a little bit here what happened is a mid lane I was worried about talking about necrophos So it looks like Miracle will block the mid lane here. GH even help him out a, a little bit. And this is the common build from GH is to go for just boots of speed and clarities. He doesn't really like walk up and take harass ever. So he just wants to have as much mana so he can stay on the map and cast as many fissures. Because again, this hero pretty much at level 1 is just a fissure. And he even fissures the storm there. Uh, note just for the extra harass. This is why Liquid are one of the best early game teams, as I mentioned it before in my video, why Liquid is the best early game team, is that they're really good at trading at early level and finding kills. Notice here, with the tri lane mid, they block off Cicada with really good fissure, and they go for this first blood and they won't get it. And being able to execute this tri lane mid is something that you definitely have to work at. It's not the easiest to just realize what the correct play is at all times. I mean, GH, um, very really good Earthshaker player, can get a lot done with the hero, and notice that after he got that kill, he actually will walk back to base because he's kind of low HP after him having to walk up and actually trade hits with the storm to secure the kill, and rather than just using his clarity and being low to, too low HP to do anything, he'll walk back to base, and immediately Kuroki will rotate to the bottom lane because he can't really do much mid without GH there, and so he'll pop in some harass on paparazzi and super in the bottom lane actually forcing them really low and then forcing the sal out of paparazzi as well and already my control should have been winning the bottom lane i didn't get to watch it at all but i could already expect that again nature's prophet does really well in these type of lane matchups that potentially have kill potential on him but again the Shadow Shaman not really good at dealing with the Nature's Prophet Treants and so as long as Nature's Prophet is just 1v2, if it's 1v3 he would have some problems but the fact that Liquid had 3 heroes mid meant that Earth Spirit pretty much had to be here and even him being here didn't save the storm from dying so this is a win-win scenario for Liquid. By having 3 heroes mid they force the Earth Spirit to go mid which means that Nature's Prophet doesn't die so he can win the bottom lane and and with three heroes mid, they're still able to kill the storm regardless of the Earth Spirit or being there. So they just won two lanes outright. And again, top lane, Matama Man is going to do just fine. And what actually happened here mid? So I missed the kill. So Dog Fights holding the regen rune for mid, but then he decides to roll in onto Miracle. Gets a first hit bash. 
And then you can't really touch him with the Whirling Axis. This is 2v1 right now. Keep that in mind. There's bottom lane. Uh, there is some action. I think GH was just TPing from base. Or no, he actually walked all the way back bottom. And keep in mind, he walked back to lane instead of TPing to the lane. He didn't TP like out to mid again. He didn't TP out to bottom lane. He walked all the way out so that he could have a TP prepared for this type of scenario. And without that TP, they wouldn't have been able to get that kill there on the Earth Spirit. And they might get two kills here, depending on if the Fisher doesn't actually block. And the regen rune, who the Earth Spirit was trying to save, would just be picked up by Miracle. Now, these two lanes are completely one. And what does this mean for Liquid? Uh, what can they do with winning these two lanes? The Troll Whirler, of course, will have decent early farm. Uh, let's open up the last hits right now and see that he's right up even with the storm even though he's getting the kills though so he should be ahead in uh net worth just check that real quick yeah he's at the top of the net worth in the game right now gh is level two almost level three actually earth spirit not doing bad as he sapped some experience mid but keep in mind miracle is like almost actually this is about half a level ahead of the um uh, storm spirit can't talk for a second there, but bottom lane. Again, with the Earth Spirit there, they can kill the Nature's Prophet, and that's exactly what they do. And I think uh, to play against Liquid, you have to be able to shut down Mind Control and GH. If GH and Mind Control have a good game, it doesn't really matter what happens to Matama Man and uh, Miracle, because the space that's going to be created by the heroes that GH and Mind Control play, mostly through split pushing, means that both Miracle and Matum Man will have time to catch up. And anyway, Liquid pretty much covers their base by picking a hero that doesn't really need to ever come back from Matum Man. They'll never double out on the greed, and that's when they tend to lose, is when they either pick a hero that Mind Control can be shut down on. Um, we saw it uh, when he played like Bristleback, I believe, and Earthshaker. And... In those scenarios, he got shut down and he couldn't come back. He needed to take some space from his team. Um, they do rely on Mind Control having a good, if not decent, start in most of their games. And Nature's Prophet is just the perfect hero to do that in the meta right now. The fact that he can win most lane matchups, especially if there's a tri lane mid going on. Um, enemy teams can't really just sacrifice their mid like that. So they'll send their roamer there. And Nature's Prophet wins most one-on-two matchups with most of the popular supports right now in the meta and carries right now in the meta, like Venomancer especially. So it limits what the enemy teams can pick up. And what the heck? Sorry about this. I'm going to have to mute this. I had a BSJ stream running on the background. Or someone's stream knows I annihilate and he started hosting someone and started playing noise. Sorry about that. But let's just get back into analysis real quick here. And this is the first episode, and I'm still getting into the swing of things as uh, I haven't made these videos in a long time. That's why I just starting with the group stage instead of the main event where the games are. I wouldn't say least important, less important, but there are just more games played. Um, Teams are still getting ready and warmed up for TI, and it's not the highest level of Dota, even though it still is, right? But it's not TI main event level, of course. Anyway, looks like... What did we miss here? Because I was distracted. So, again, Metal Man gets gone on top. He doesn't have the biggest wand charge in the world, so they still can be able to kill him. Again, Necrophos is almost unkillable with... Um, 17 wand charges or about 17 wand charges but the TP rotations coming in from mind control Kuroki and even GH walking in will secure them two kills and this is something that Liquid is really good at even if they lose a hero they're fast at responding and of course it's a lot easier with heroes like Nature's Prophet and I think to shut down Liquid is to make sure that mind control has a bad lane on Nature's Prophet but it's really hard to secure that without sitting three heroes in the safe lane. Uh, I'm not so sure what you could actually do. Um, I have to look through the replays where they did lose with Nature's Prophet, but a lot of times the team realized this hero is this hero was too hard to deal with and they just ended up banning it out. Of course, their idea here on IGV is probably to kill Nature's Prophet in the mid game 
Storm Spear is really good at doing that. So is the Earth Spirit. But it looks like Storm is just having a really bad time now. He tries to go for a kill mid. They send both supports here. They do get the kill there into GH. But again, Liquid really good at trading. So they will get one kill in return and potentially two. I'm not so sure about this. That was actually a sick tree. Like push super back into the action there real quick. But with the TP rotation in from Paparazzi, they will get two kills. So finally, IGV finds uh, the first beneficial trade for them at the game. And keep in mind, Liquid supports as well. They got one ward here behind the tower. This allows them to play aggressively in the mid lane very easily. And Mind Control is in a little bit of trouble here. And another ward here, which will allow them to wrap around, have vision on heroes TPing into the top lane to protect Matumba Man, as well as make dives onto in July easier. My control manages to juke and get away. So laning stage is pretty much over at this point for Liquid as they're rotating around. Uh, my control is going from lane to lane, is ganking at this point, and because he's playing so active, he will go for the magic wand. Of course, now Paparazzi will transition to jungling at this point. As he can still farm the bottom lane out, but he wants to ideally just leave it up to super so he can get his level 6 and maybe they can look to push. Again, Miracle gets gone on in the mid lane, but he'll have supports here to help him out. Both these supports really good defensively, not that good offensively. You have to play them in a certain way to be able to get ganks and things happening with them. But of course, they'll always have the help from mind control, so he assists in that area there. But this pretty much secures the mid lane for Miracle, as long as the supports have TPs or they're in the area. Um, IGV will never be able to go on him, and notice that GH is skill build reflects this as well putting two points in fissure in other games he does max out the aftershock um just leaving one in fissure but in this game he realized that he needs to be a good defensive support and having the extra stun and even the cooldown on the fissure will be important to save miracle because he's the main carrier of the game at this point while Matom man is I would say acting as not the off laner, but he's the solo hero. He's going to be off on his own doing his thing where he's just farming up and his item build even reflects that with the Midas. And this is something that's common with Liquid, I noticed in a lot of their replays. Of course, this is the first replay I've gone over for them in a while, but I've watched many and I also watched the games live, of course. And I noticed that they always like to put one hero. It could be Metal Man, it could be Miracle, and even Mind Control in certain games. Uh, he might still be like Nature's Prophet, but um, in this game he's taking the active role where he's ganking actively and it's reflected in his uh, item build now with his Orchid. So he's looking to go for ganks and instead of just split pushing and pushing out waves. And that job is going to be given to Matama Man who will go for a Midas to secure more farm and make sure that he can survive. Of course it's greedy it looks like but um, the more items he gets up the harder he is to kill depending on what he wants to build. Um, veil, hood, force staff, anything that will keep him alive. In the meantime um, after that gank top Miracle will simultaneously push mid with GH helping him out uh, cover him as well and they will get the mid tower and that's also one thing that Liquid's really good at is taking towers and keeping their towers alive which is really important and this whole time Kuroki was just pushing out the bottom lane so even as the five position he has decent farm he's not super poor has arcane boots and GH this game of course goes for tranquils and windlays to be as active as possible and this is what he usually always goes to um, even if he does go after shock 1-1-2 one, one, he always goes back for one point in the fissure again or er, so he always ends up 2-1-2 two, two, it seems at level 5 um, I haven't watched that many Earthshaker replays of him but just from what I've noticed this is what he consistently does um, he might change it depending on the game scenario Monos again, this is kind of the ideal scenario for Liquid. I think Miracle will still die here, but they at least turn this around and get some kills. 
they always want Miracle to get gone on because he's actually deceptively tanky if he gets his Whirling Axes off. It's a really good ability against Sven and Storm Spirit. And with that, yeah, they get the kill back onto the Sven. They get the kill back onto Shadow Shaman. And now Sakata's in a lot of trouble. Nice Sprout there. And they'll get three kills. They'll lose two GH and Miracle. But with the T rotations coming in from my control, Matam Man, they'll even farm the wards. So at any point, they're really only putting Miracle in a vulnerable position. They don't want Matoma Man getting gone on by too many heroes. He's okay getting gone on by one or two. And even if he's in lane with one or two heroes, um, they could always TP the Nature's Prophet in for a gank. So no, like they can't ever show up heroes to Matoma Man's lane without having a huge force. And as a result, he should be able to split push pretty freely as long as the enemy team isn't completely missing. At that point, he'll play safer and the Midas will help him out. In that scenario where he can just jungle the safe camps and get his farm up that way if the enemy team is just grouping up and staying hidden as five. And they'll only show Miracle on the map and they'll have the supports staying behind Miracle at all times to protect, protect him. And notice that after they won that team fight, they know that ultimates were used from the enemy team and they'll walk back or walk straight into the rosh pit while the enemy team's ultimates are cooling down and sneak a roshan and now dog fights wants to scout it out but the supports are here gh with the fissure he'll get himself out but they'll still secure roshan as for miracle's item build this item build is geared towards taking the more dangerous farm and playing a more aggressive position on the map like for example, if he was just playing on taking all the safe farm and playing passive, just farming up like his jungle, ancients and things like that, he would go for Mask of Madness a lot of times on Troll Warlord, as it is the fastest farming item you can build. But notice that Miracle will go for a Vlad's, which means he wants to pressure down towers. And because they showed heroes at Rosh, they know that Matum Man is free to just push out all the way down this bottom lane. So he's been down here for the past like one or two minutes now and he's starting to work on this tier 2 now his team will group up with him um, did a good job of catching mind control split pushing and I think this was him playing a little bit greedy um, they realized that he might go top that's only where uh, only place where he would want to be um, of course he could also be farming jungle which I felt like was the better play for him because again they can't afford to show too many split pushes on the map because IGV's catch is pretty good um, the most they can ever show is one or two, right? And they'll have the support to sit behind them. And then once heroes show, of course, that's when Nature's Prophet can split push, but heroes weren't showing for IGV and he ended up getting picked off. But it didn't really cost them anything. Um, the Shadow Shaman took this opportunity to try to drop warts on the tower, but they already take the tier 2 bot and they even can TP Miracle up top and with the Aegis he can just hit these wards and they can't really go on him and getting this Aegis is a really big deal. This actually opens up the opportunity for Liquid to split push with 2 heroes. Again, they probably can't split push with 3 because at that point they're going to get caught by the Storm Spirit, Earth Spirit and it's going to be a huge problem. But now with the Aegis onto Miracle, they can not only use him as a group up and push hero with his Vlads by running down the lane and they can just have a front line hit the tower and they don't really care about him dying because he'll have the Aegis and at the same time notice what Metubbleman is doing is they can put pressure in multiple lanes and look the supports will leave Miracle they're like alright you have the Aegis you're fine now the enemy team don't know where we are they'll reveal themselves by throwing the fissure here but it's too late enemy team is not in position to go into Miracle anymore and even if they do he still has the Aegis my control will be here to back him up and it's not guaranteed. Now they'll go back on him as the supports show mid. This is a good play, but keep in mind, he can survive for a really long time. Whirling Axe is a good spell against heroes like Storm Spirit. The mischance does hurt him a lot, and even if they lose the Aegis there, they're fine with it. They get the tower. Um, it's not the best usage of the Aegis, but again, this will just help prolong the game and get more farm onto Matoma Man and Mind Control, right? This is when they're looking for the Orchid timing to just go for a pickoff and transition that into another tower. Keep in mind they took Roshan, um, I think, like two minutes ago, three minutes ago. At this point, I didn't really keep the timer on it, but getting that first Aegis just to secure the extra gold, it secured them towers as well. 
this bottom tower because the enemy team was distracted by Rosh for a second. Metalman was able to walk in all the way and with the Aegis they walked Miracle down here, took this bottom tower. And at this point, if you look at IGV, they don't have that many options on the map right now. So taking this from IGV's perspective, right, they pick the Storm Spirit to be able to pick off the split pushing heroes. And at this point, they he got tri lane mid, first of all. So it already hurt them in laning stage. The point that they picked the Storm Spirit for the specific purpose to kill heroes like the Nature's Prophet, potentially even the Necrophos. But at this point, he's too under farm to do anything. And in July, eventually got his mech here. So they are in team fighting shape, but so is Liquid. They do get a good initiation and manage to kill mind control at this moment. And they even clean up this fight potentially. Storm Spirit isn't here quite yet. Storm or uh, Sven is looking to reinitiate. He gets a good initiation there onto the Winter Waverin. He's pretty much the number one priority for Vitality, IG Vitality to kill. If they don't kill him, they won't kill anybody. And they do manage to take a fight there. So good timing there. As I was right about to say, with the mech onto In July and Blink onto Sven. They're looking to fight again. This is a very strong team fight combination. They have a bunch of disables on the Shala Shaman and the Earth Spirit, even the Sven. And with the vacuum, they can combo their abilities and they do clean up that fight and take the tower. But again, Liquid has not hit their timing yet. If you look at Matumman, he's going for Radiance. He picked up the Radiance recipe. Their timing is that Radiance. It's going to be really strong. Not only do the Sven and Storm Spirit have to deal with the mischance from the Whirling Axes, now they have to deal with the Radiance and with Mind Control's Orchid. Any point if a hero shows up alone on the map, they'll have to uh, pretty much uh, have a way to get out of the silence or avoid the gank because that when Liquid gets the blink onto GH as well, they can never split up at that point. They have to stay together. Even the Storm Spirit has to be careful of split pushing until it gets the uh, ability to get away from the silence. Otherwise, he'll just die. So that means Dark Seers, they're only split pressure at this point, while Liquid will have access to at least two. Again, even without the Aegis at this point, the tank gear that Necro gets, even with just one support hero behind him, Liquid can't really go on him. If they have the Aegis, they can even send the troll really aggressively. But now at this point, if they want to play aggressive with Miracle, they'll have to have the backup of two supports. Um, once Necro gets bigger, they'll have backup of one support potentially and my control his job is not to split push this game and he's just built to do ganking right he's not built to split push at all he doesn't have a drums look at his um items right now he has literally the phase boots orchid and magic wand and that's it he just wants to fight and his next item is bkb his job this game is not to split push and Liquid are really good at realizing this and enemy teams, if you're trying to beat Liquid, right? you have to realize what role each Liquid hero is taking and how to disrupt those roles. The teams that do manage to beat Liquid are the ones that disrupt their timings, that either run them down and force them into a scenario where split pushing is their only option. You don't want to give Liquid the option to be able to take advantageous fights or win a fight because they take a little bit and get a lot out of it. Like they'll take one one fight and transition it into a lot of map control pressure. They'll look for additional ganks and it's really hard so you want to avoid that. And here you see IGV get a really good gank off, and they're doing a decent job this game. I actually don't know who wins this game, so IGV might end up winning this one, I'm not so sure. But this, they're on the right track right now. I noticed these Sven's build, he's built straight to counter the Troll Warlord, right? Went for Mask of Madness, Blink Dagger, Mask of Madness will accelerate his farm, Blink Dagger to fight with his team, because they have really good team fight at this time. Um, they'll have to be careful later on as like four staffs comes out, the radiance comes out of course, and even BKBs as that's what the Nature's Prophet is building and the troll is building, and the troll is really close to his. So they want to get as much out of the map before these BKB timings come out and the radiance comes out, and they get a tier one bottom. They try to work towards the tier two, but this is asking for too much. The heroes will respawn on Liquid and they'll have to back off, and now. They need to look for their next play. Again, they're on a little bit of a timer. Of course, if this goes super late, it can go either way, but they don't want to risk that against Liquid's lineup. 
Again, I think that Liquid's lineup is a lot easier to play in the late game than IGVs. IGVs in the late game will have to rely on good initiations, good jumps onto critical heroes to win, while Liquid can kind of just bait heroes, split push, and just play the economy, right? Um, they can get further and further ahead and farm, and they just have easier time playing with their lineup. With two defensive supports, they just sit them behind a hero. Once a troll has the BKB, he doesn't really have to worry about dying either to gank as long as he can get his BKB off. Nature's Prof could eventually transition into split pushing a little bit himself once that's the case. And now Liquid realized that they have a timing here with the BKB onto the troll warlord. They're going to look for a gank. It's not going to be an easy gank that IGV has pretty good positioning right now. And in terms of defensive items and things like that, almost blink onto the Earth Spirit and Glimmer on Super. And yeah, they know that this is coming. Um, they know that the troll most likely has BKB very soon as they had some vision on him, I believe, with this ward. And they see Liquid missing for a second here. And this is a huge, huge uh, red flag. This is bottom tower taking damage. but. Liquid end up having the better position. Let's go back as I was a little bit distracted. So Liquid get the smoke off and they decide that they don't want to go onto the shrine here, right? Notice they walk past here and they stop. They don't want to fight near this shrine. Instead, they set up camp in this area and they're actually under a ward. So Earth Spirit found an opportunity to run in, but good be precise. We'll shut down the Storm Spirit and they don't manage to burst either of these supports, the Earth Shaker or the Winter Waven. And they had a little bit of a split initiation there, which again, notice Liquid's team fight is easier to execute as long as they can not lose a hero right at the start of the fight or get caught in the full combo. They can just eventually outlast in these fights. They're okay with having more prolonged fights, especially with heroes like the Necrophos with the Radiance and with this timing, it just worked out for them. Again, IGV had a good idea to stay at the shrine, but they didn't realize Liquid's full potential here. And Liquid did realize their own full potential. As long as they spread out here, made sure they didn't get like all vacuum walled or something crazy here in this area. They spread out pretty decently, even th though they got caught under this uh, Observer Ward vision because IGV initiated on them. And again, that's what Liquid rely on at this point. They want to counter initiate. They want IGV to go on them as long as it's in the right scenario. Like, they don't have the best lineup to catch themselves unless it's just for a gank, right? They never want to really start a fight just by jumping in unless they can find, like, a really good initiation, like, three-man echo or something like that, right? Or, like, a winter's curse into an echo or a fissure, whatever, something like that. Um, ideally, they always want to get initiated on first and then counter-initiate in some way. So now the next Aegis uh, will be up. And... It's for IGV's game, right? They're still in it. They're, if you look at the net worth, it's been quite even all game. Why doesn't my F6 hotkey work? Alright, whatever. I'll just open it up manually. Anyway, right here, IGV do have... They were at like almost zero at that point. But now after that fight, Liquid gained a little bit more of an advantage. Liquid, of course, really far ahead at some point, but the nice ganks from IGV has helped them catch up. So again, Liquid's game plan right now is just to split push. You can send two heroes to two lanes, and again, notice now that they'll send Miracle to one lane with GH behind him, and now Kuroki is pairing up with Matama Man. And this is what I was talking about before, but once these heroes get farmed enough, the Troll Warlord and the Necrophos, they don't need two supports behind them anymore. And at this point, they can just go with a 2-2 two -two grouping, and then Mind Control can be off in the other lane, potentially split pushing. Um, it's still not that safe for him to do so with heroes like Storm on the map, and notice that Sakata's waiting for it, actually. He's sitting here, waiting for Nature's Prophet to show up or something, or for somebody to show up. but. Nature's Prophet, Mind Control is smart about it and he'll actually just send his treants to push out the lanes. At the same time, like IGV are really looking for initiation of some sort, but instead, Liquid will get the initiation. This is a really smart play and it all goes down to this. So, if you see here, they see the Serpent Wards drop top and they can immediately assume that there's heroes here. There has to be other heroes here. There's no way that Shadow Shaman like walks up here and does this alone. And you know, even if the heroes are coming back, they're not going to come back immediately. Uh, 
And they see the tower fall here, and they find the opportunity. It's a very short opportunity, right? Notice, like, Storm is only alone for a second here. The heroes are TPing back, but they're not there. They're not all there, and either they have to TP back, they have to TP back in different spots. If they all TP on the same building, it's going to take longer. So, it's a short opportunity, but Liquid moves fast, they realize the opportunity, and they take it. And with the Reaper Scythe, they clean up the Storm of Spirit. Again, this is the only time where Liquid want to really initiate is when they can get a hero alone. And Storm Spirit, he was alone for barely like half a second, if not one second there. As heroes were coming back almost immediately, but Liquid found that opportunity and this is what they're really good at. They knew that Storm Spirit would be down here. They first, remember, what they did first here was they showed mind control. They showed mind control here to bait a hero to come, right? And what hero is going to come, it's going to be the Storm Spirit because he's the hero that can kill mind control. They showed my control in the bottom lane, but they didn't actually send the real hero because they didn't want him to die and he didn't have backup quite yet. Instead, they just sent his tree ants and Storm is still going to wait, right? Because not only that, the creep wave was pushing in, so even if he couldn't get a kill there onto my control, he would want to farm the creep wave. And they knew that. They knew that he would want to farm the creep wave and what did they do with the rest of the heroes, right? They didn't care about this top lane at all. They stopped caring about mid for a second here and they just sent their heroes to the bottom lane with a smoke. That was a really good smoke there from like whatever called that to go there and they knew that storm was going to have to be alone for one or two seconds because it doesn't or the enemy heroes aren't going to TP back in immediately it takes them a bit and with that they're able to open up that opportunity get the kill in the storm he did have buyback but it's too late right and they're going to actually probably take a racks with this and then this game went from being a relatively even game to just Probably a melee racks, if not a full set of racks for Liquid. A tall man pushing himself really aggressively to make sure that he can catch any initiation and just allows Miracle to finish off the racks. And off for one good play, Liquid get themselves a pretty big advantage at this point. Now Storm is like really far behind. They did a good job of coming back for a second there, but now he still doesn't have his Orchid. And with the BKB coming out for Nature's Prophet, it's too late for him to even kill the nature's profit and this is the time where liquid are going to be the strongest and it's the kind of time where they're going to end the game with the bkb onto mind control he can team fight really well and now even if he's split pushing he doesn't have to worry about the storm if there's a storm alone he pops bkb he mans up on him with the orchid and there's nothing that the storm can do about it but instead really good gank here how did they catch this was this just a luck gank i don't know they saw him yeah this ward that they placed while pushing the top tower um Paying off here as they get the kill onto the Necrophos as a result. And he thought he was safe. Um, there's no way that he would think they had vision on him, especially next to a shrine. So, really good gank. And this is the place that they want to be because this is the least likely spot where Necro Metal Man would think he would get ganked. This allows them to transition to Rosh. And I wonder if they do try to fight this. They have Winter's Curse, they don't have Echo, and they're going to have to give Rosh away to IGV. So, what was a winning game for Liquid with one good smoke, IGV turning around. And this is what uh, teams have to do against Liquid. So, if it was coaching a team trying to beat Liquid at TI, I would say, you have to look for these opportunities. If you can't find these opportunities against Liquid, and you let them do it to you, pretty much have to trade one for one with them like if they get a good smoke off you have to go back and try to find your own and if you can't get those you're gonna be in a lot of trouble because with the lineups they pick again easier to execute right laning stage I would say is arguably harder uh, with their heroes they need to lane it in a very certain way for them to get ahead as easily they can get run over in the lanes if they don't play it properly but again they have gh one of the best fours in the game right now gets a lot done and through mid game he comes back and the reason why their early game has to go well is because he relies on like matama man and miracle to make space for him to get his farm up because a lot of times he plays greedy heroes like Earthshaker, even io is considered actually a greedy support hero and coddle right And 
and we see like the times that liquid did get beaten is when teams just ran them down with like a drow strat or something like that and they didn't uh, have the ability to create space for everyone on their team to get farm at that point they kind of just fell apart but there was a huge win for igv they claim the agus and cheese will get the agus to swarm cheese to the sven and what is liquid's game plan right now um i think they have the BKB on Nature's Profit, but it's really hard to fight into Aegis and Cheese, so this will just delay the game. And the game's slowing down significantly, so I'm just going to speed it up at this point. So Liquid's game plan right now is they can't really split up, because with the Aegis onto IGV, they can't really take a fight. So if they split up, even if like IGV just go in and like dump everything onto a hero, um, and they use their abilities to save, they'll always have to disengage, and if they disengage by using like they have to use their ultimates to disengage they'll have to back off and they actually still try to take a fight here they think that they can potentially burst paparazzi but they're wrong about it he popped bkb so mistake from liquid again they're in a very weird scenario right now by losing this aegis this is a huge play from igv to get this aegis and cheese and again when you get put into a weird scenario where your options aren't that many and they're limited you're gonna make mistakes and this is what you're trying to maximize in the game of dota so with that they win a fight there they take a tier one and a tier two keep in mind that liquid are good at keeping their towers alive this tier one was alive for 30 minutes before it went down and now they can push straight into mid even with this metal man still dead and that here to do so sven warcry will keep the cube wave alive he still has the uh cheese of course bkb is cooling down but uh, they won't commit too far as their waves are pushing in and they know that Liquid's high ground defense is still incredibly strong with the Winter Waven and Earthshaker even though he doesn't have Echo anymore they don't want to risk going high ground again especially against three shrines here and notice uh, Mind Control's build still he's going for a full team fight and going for the Shiva's next and at this point Aegis will expire very soon and Storm will no longer have access to that. He's going for a BKB of his own, but as of now, he still has no way to deal with the Silence and the Reaper Scythe going on to him. So he definitely has to watch out for that. He gets significantly weaker once his Aegis expires. And Liquid realizes they know that this is about the time and on a good initiation. It's a really important initiation as well. It's on to one of the counter initiators, and actually both of the counter initiators from IGV, right? Onto the Earth Spirit and the Dark Seer. Set up by this really nice ward here. And when did they actually place this ward? I think it's as they walked up. So sick play there. Yeah, it's as they walked up. They walk up, place the ward, catch a glimpse of these two heroes, and immediately they go. They know that they can go in these heroes without fear. Like, if it's a Sven, if it's a Storm, they might have to watch out, of course, because Storm has the Aegis. But if it's the counter initiators, they can initiate on them all they want without fear immediately and know that they're going to be fine. But unfortunately, the Sven is still way too strong and he comes in and cleans up four heroes stand for Liquid. And that was with a buyback as well from in July. So it cost them a buyback, but they managed to wipe the floor with Liquid. I wouldn't say that's a bait by them, they definitely didn't expect to get caught there, but uh, it ended up working out just because of their heroes and how strong the Sven is and how good the Storm is at catching uh, fleeing heroes that will allow them to walk in and probably trade for a counter axe. Yeah, Waverin tries to slow the Rax taking as fast as possible, but with that, they take a counter melee racks and they come back in this game. And I think IGV has a decent approach of this game. Unfortunately, they retreat a bit awkwardly and lose the Sven. So just look at their escape route here. Uh, they didn't want to run straight because the Necro had a blink and he kind of just blinked forward. Same thing with the Earthshaker, but it ended up being the correct play here, most likely, is just to run straight back by running onto the shrine here. Of course, Liquid has the shrine here, so they're not going to be worried about fighting here at all. And Sven ended up getting caught. Mind Control comes in and TPs and catches the hero running mid. So the fact that they split up here was a big problem. The Shadow Shaman walked back mid, while the rest of the team walked back top. 
and it ended up getting them killed around the GH actually, but it ended up losing them a lot more as the Sven died and the Shadow Shaman still ended up dying as well. Again, you give a Liquid an inch and they're going to take a mile out of it, and with this push into mid, and again, with their lineup, they're set up to do that as well. Um, Troll is a really good hero at doing this. Any small mistake, if they can get ahead, that's just going to be a straight counter racks. Earthshaker or Earth Spirit gets taken out and we'll have to force the buy back. Now they want to catch Liquid on the retreat, but they have to be careful doing so. There's a BKB now in the Necropose. I'm going to go back to regular speed so I can fully analyze this properly. Uh, gem gets dropped and I think Liquid will take this game. Paparazzi running into this problem. Gets blocked into the Sprout. Can't do anything. We'll manage to get out and get some counter kills. Buyback came from the Storm. But now they know that a lot of these heroes are on buyback now. Maybe you'll open the buyback status. Liquid did not use any, pretty much. Right? They didn't use any. While well, now the Earth Spirit's death or buyback timer is up. And the Darkseer and the Storm, they have to use three buybacks. That's a lot of lost gold, as well as the fact that if they lose these heroes again, uh, Liquid can potentially just end the game and go like straight throne. They have the heroes to do so with the Troll Warlord. And now at this point, uh, the next rush will be the play. So both teams will play around next Roshan. And Matomen's build, he's survivable enough with the BKB. He's pretty much untouchable, so he's just going for all out damage now to get a surprise burst. Again, having that burst is really significant because if they can kill these heroes that buy it back, if that, that's the case, they get a good catch, good smoke, um, that could just be game. So, uh, he hasn't bought the Dagon yet because of course he still wants to save for the buyback of his own and he even turns off his Radiance while there's smoke to make sure that it doesn't alert any attention. And they might run into a Shadow Shaman here which would be bad and notice their smoke play. Same thing as last time. They smoked up to the mid lane and now they're standing here waiting for here to walk up. They won't venture onto the shrine area even when the shrine is killed, right? It's just better position for them. They can place a ward on this cliff and they'll have a good spread here. Well, if they walk up here, this is a pretty tight area where you can just imagine what a Darkseer can do, right? You can vacuum and get a wall, get a Sven stun, and they can win the fight here pretty easily if uh, Liquid walk up into the high ground. Instead, they walk up onto this high ground and wait here. And as a result, they kill the Sven. Um, they don't have the top tier too, so they won't be able to like take mega creeps with this, especially with the creep wave still pushed out pretty far in the top lane. So instead, this kill and the smoke gank will only secure them rush. But I say only, but this is a huge deal. Now they'll have Aegis and Cheese onto Miracle and the Tum Man, which was taken away from them. I think if they got the last Aegis and Cheese, they would have just won the game already. But because good play from IGV allowed them to prolong the game. And IGV getting caught by the same move twice pretty much. Um, the last time, I think they knew Liquid was there, this time they had no idea as they walked up here and got caught with the Echo Slam. Uh, last time was, I would say, more of their mistake, and second time was just really well played there from Liquid, having good positioning, and both of the smokes were pretty much identical, so... This is something you could watch for. Um, if they're gonna do it two times in one game, they're likely to do it other times in other games as well, with similar lineups that they have here. And now IGV in a pretty bad position after losing this mid rax This is a devastating hit. Again, it all stemmed from a bad retreat here. Um, again, this is really hard. In the heat of the moment, you see enemy heroes coming towards you. You see them respawning. Uh, of course, they wanted to commit just to get their rax right? But planning retreats is something that's really hard to do in Dota. And it's where a lot of pub games are lost. Where... The miscommunication can happen where some heroes will TP out, some heroes maybe want to go back in, and the direction you run, where you run, everyone's kind of, every man for themselves, either trying to survive, doing their own thing, as what happened to IGV, they ended up losing the Sven as a result, which cost them a lot because they were able to run straight down mid, take the mid racks, and he didn't have buyback, or he didn't want to use his buyback, I'm not sure which, and now they're in a very bad situation where Liquid has a pretty clear win condition. Like Miracle can just hit this top racks and
and he has the Aegis. He's really tanky with the Scotty. They can't really touch him. They have to do like weird tactics and force him in at this point. And instead, Matumman just blinks in, tries to blow up the Shadow Shaman. Um, unfortunately, he doesn't manage to get him. This is actually turning out to be a decent fight for IGB now. And this that happened. And yeah. Liquid really just needed to be patient, but they hit the call to go and they had to go. Of course, they're not out of it or anything, but this fight ended up going pretty bad. They'll have to buy back this Winter and Raven and see how things actually go. Again, at this point, it's just uh, team fight mechanics at this point. It's how the team fight gets played. Uh, strategy gets blown out of the window once a fight breaks out like that. And it's just down to individual players and how they perform. And it turned out it's pretty good for Liquid there as they only lose two. I say only, but uh, it was one of their cores, of course, on Tomatel Man. And he didn't have buyback because he thought the game was over. Again, pretty clear win condition. But notice that no team is perfect. Even Liquid, TI winners, first round of the group stage, they're still making a significant amount of mistakes that IGB capitalized on, for sure. But now again, they just need to chill, they need to send Miracle, hit the tower, he still has the Aegis. Got lucky, didn't actually lose the Aegis, which is a really big deal because this means that they can just wait for Matumman to respawn and go again. And there's not much to see at this point. Um, they still have the very clear win condition. And if you look at the net worth, they're not that far ahead actually, but just because of the game position, the fact that they have two, almost two sets of racks, I think. Yeah, the range is still alive mid, but it's pretty much two sets of racks, and they have the Aegis as well for a little bit longer onto Miracle. Their win condition is still quite easy, and they even got lucky there with a the DDU in the bottom lane. And now they're just going to send Miracle. They'll hit the tower. They can force him in. They can throw all their spells on him. What they actually want to do is to throw the spells onto Miracle, just summon spells, and then force Liquid to back them up. But Liquid are good. They had a good spread. They didn't scoop up trying to save. Miracle or anything like that, and they'll manage to clean up. It's a scrappy fight to end this game, and finally the Aegis will be popped. Yeah, IGV props to them though, they approach this high ground defense, even though I think it's really low odds for them to actually be able to defend here, but they approached it well. Uh, they went on to Miracle, threw a couple of spells on him, most probably even forced them into the base a little bit just to make it easier for them to cast their spells, their hexes and things like that and then they went for the back line. They waited for Liquid to walk up to try to retaliate to them going on to Miracle to try to go on the back line. They managed to clean up the back line. Again, they killed a tub man, they killed the Went Wavering and they killed GH who was forced to buy back. But at this point, Liquid's advantage is too overwhelming. They're able to even buy back on GH, come back into the fight. Miracle still had the Aegis of course and he's incredibly powerful. So. And though they ignored him because that was the right play because he had the Aegis, they eventually had to kill him, right? Otherwise he would kill all their heroes, but when they killed him, he respawned with the Aegis and they claimed the Mega Creeps and this game is pretty much over. I'm gonna speed to the end, there's not much more to watch. Again, these fights really don't matter, like you can put like anyone in this scenario and they're pretty much going to win the game. Um, there's not much analysis to be done from this point onward and Liquid will take this game against IGV. So I think the biggest thing to learn from this game is, again, Liquid, really good early game team. You have to be able to set your lanes up in a way that you don't outright lose them. I think IGV did okay on that front, right? They lost the mid lane pretty hard. They lost the bottom lane. They ended up losing two lanes, but they came back from it well. They sent the Earth Spear eventually to the bottom lane and killed the Nature's Prophet. Got some advantage back there. Even got a couple of kills there onto Miracle, and they're just trading. Um, it wasn't ideal trades. You got to say that, right? Liquid were getting ahead. Um, at some point in the game, like Liquid was like about 6,000 gold ahead because they were taking the favorable trade in those scenarios, but IG was getting things done. They didn't allow Liquid to just free farm. I think that was really important to them being able to transition into the mid game and after Liquid got that 6k advantage to take team fights with their item timings. They got the mech dagger, the blink dagger, and the Sven, and they were able to get smoke ganks off and catch Liquid off guard multiple times, but their mistake was doing it when Liquid were prepared. Every time they caught Liquid, they caught them when they were not ready in fighting shape, not as a five. And that one fight where they went on to Liquid, where they um, thought they could catch them at the Ancient area, uh, they lost a big fight there, which gave Liquid back a big advantage. Not only that, Liquid getting that first Aegis was also a big factor, but um, 
the big the first Aegis didn't really amount to much as you saw right it kind of just was lost in the top lane and even the liquid realized themselves that it wasn't that important that they keep that Aegis onto the troll they kind of just want to get objectives out of it get farm out of it and they did it they got like a tier 2 a tier 1 and a lot of map control with the first Aegis but it was really that fight that happened at the ancient that was like a turning point where liquid was able to come back in the game and IGV had many comes back after come backs after that but it just didn't matter again liquids lineup i'd say was a little bit easier to execute they got global heroes they have decent catch necrophos of course is a very hard hero to always deal with in the game especially uh, as farmer as he was with the midas radiance and it all stemmed from the laning stage like matama man if he didn't have a good laning stage if liquid didn't have a good laning stage overall he wouldn't be able to go for these greedy items because at some point igv can just get there Again, what happened in this game was that blink mech timing and if Matumman went too greedy and he went for Midas and he doesn't get his next item like the hood that he got or like the treads or whatever, he will just get run down with the fact that he got an early Midas, the timings came online where they're able to at least meet IGV head to head at some point and you saw that at that ancient fight where they were able to meet IGV head to head even though IGV got a decent initiation off but not the best it was critical for them to win that fight and then carry that on as a big advantage going on towards the game made the game very hard for Storm and again they got that bottom Rex as well I would say that was another big point for, there for Liquid where they baited the Storm in there so I think a lot of it had to do with them shutting down Sakata in lane he had a bad lane and after that this game was just super hard they picked the storm spirit because they saw nature's profit they're like easy we'll just pick off mind control but liquid adjusted mind control didn't play the split pushing role he was just the ganker he farmed jungle most of the time went for the orchid went for the bkb he was the ganker he was the team fighter nature's profit and i think this hero is really versatile and why he's super good right now and i think if you were to look towards liquid you don't give them these heroes like the nature's profit right a lot of teams ended up banning it out it took them pretty late in ti to realize either that or you pick a good matchup against the nature's profit and i think there's one game from eg that they beat liquid or i forgot what team actually it probably, i don't think it was liquid but it was uh nature's profit versus a um a cheesy lone druid where lone druid is able to dominate the lane again lone druid can push a lot faster than nature's prophet can pretty much once his bear gets farmed and at that point it puts the nature's prophet in a weird scenario where he can't really team fight that well against the lone druid um and he can't out split push him either and not only that but he loses the lane matchup so i think the way you deal with especially like team liquids uh nature's prophet is you need to be able to win the lane matchup and this is not a case. The Sven, of course, does okay against the Nature's Prophet. Nature's Prophet won't be able to zone the Sven out entirely as long as he has regen up. He's decent armor, especially with the War Cry and the Stout Shield. And he can tank the Treants pretty well, tank the auto attacks from the Nature's Prophet. But the problem was that they couldn't try lane there because their mid matchup was weak. Um, I think that's something you have to consider the way that drafting works in dota is pretty difficult because not only you have to pick for your lane matchups but you need to pick for the game right uh, you need to consider every part of the game and that's why heroes that are versatile that can do a lot of things like nature's profit can where you can win the um, laning stage and you can gank you can split push you can do a lot um is important to have at your dispensal same thing like Io, and I think that Liquid being able to play a lot of these versatile heroes, these niche heroes even as well, which allowed them to just have a more variety of uh, heroes to play in their drafts, and heroes that were not only good, but required the enemy team to play a certain way, right? Like the Huskar, because Huskar has a certain playstyle where if you're playing Huskar, you're kind of playing different from every other carry in the game. You have certain timings where you want to do certain things, certain heroes are good against you. And same thing for the enemy team, right? If you're playing against a Huskar, you have to play around him in a way. Same thing like heroes like Meepo. 
and Broodmother and things like that, Io. It completely changes the way how you have to play the game. And because Liquid got to play their game, they got to play Kuroki's Dota instead of whatever other team's Dota. Um, they're able to win their games and this is a long video again a lot of these videos are gonna be long I'm doing full replay analysis multiple times over I'll speed through some parts of it but I won't extend this video for that much longer I'll see you in the next one and if you enjoyed this video make sure you leave a like down below and subscribe if you want to see more of this content again this, these videos are gonna come every single day this is gonna be a series on this channel first time I'm doing this because I think these one-off tutorial videos how to gain MMR for pubs and things like that are fun but uh, i want to also provide some more serious videos on this channel so this series again is going to be called how to beat team liquid at ti7 and this is going to be part one of i don't know how many i'm going to go over literally every single official game that liquid played at ti and analyzing what the enemy team could have done better what the enemy team did well against them what liquid does and give you a whole rundown Again, it's not going to be that in-depth because I'm going over a lot of games, but it's just what I personally noticed from one run through a replay. And yep, this is going to be pretty much it for this one, and I'll see you in the next.